Hello, my name is Tanya Babich and I'm the Assistant Vice President of the Risk Management Department at TMLT. A unique challenge for physicians is knowing when and how to terminate the patient-physician relationship. For a number of reasons, termination is sometimes the best course of action for both the physician and the patient. In this video, we'll review some of the common reasons for ending the relationship and special circumstances to consider before initiating the process. While both the physician and the patient have the right to end the relationship, the physician is required to follow a series of steps to ensure the relationship has been terminated properly. It's important to carefully examine the relationship specifics before terminating to avoid being accused of abandonment. Patient non-compliance with recommended treatment is one of the most common reasons for dismissing patients. Additional reasons may include failure to keep appointments, abusive, inappropriate, or rude behavior such as threats, physical violence, or sexual advances, non-adherence to the policies of the practice, prescription fraud or drug-seeking behavior, filing a lawsuit or complaint with the state medical board, or failure to pay an outstanding balance. Several factors can make terminating the patient relationship more complex. It's important to carefully review each situation on a case-by-case -case basis when considering terminating the relationship. For example, for an OB-GYN physician, it may be problematic to discharge a patient in the last trimester of pregnancy. After 28 weeks gestation, the patient may not be able to find a physician to care for her. If transfer of care can't be arranged, it's likely the physician will need to continue treating the patient through the postpartum period. If transfer of care is arranged, it's important to document the name of the patient's new physician, the date that records were sent to the new physician, and the patient's first scheduled appointment with the new provider. Generally, an on-call specialist in the emergency department must see a patient through the emergency until the patient is stable, including providing follow-up care. However, the specialist is not obligated to treat the patient for conditions unrelated to the emergency. Hospitals don't normally allow on-call physicians to refuse care to a patient, even if the patient has previously been dismissed. If a previously dismissed patient is provided care or admitted, it's important to inform the patient that once he or she is discharged from the hospital, the relationship is still terminated. Clarify that the emergency treatment does not reestablish the relationship and document this discussion. It's also imperative to review on-call contract terms and medical staff bylaws for any specific guidelines regarding patients who have been previously dismissed. the relationship with a patient who's hospitalized or in the post-operative period is not recommended. Physicians should care for the patient until he or she is stable and a seamless transfer of care can occur. Physicians in rural areas may find it especially difficult to terminate patient relationships due to a lack of available specialists or alternate providers close by. It's important to remain flexible when a patient needs continued care and there are no other providers in the area. However, the growth of telemedicine in recent years may offer more options for patients to receive specialty care. Dismissing pediatric patients can be challenging because reasons for termination, such as non-compliance or non-payment, are not the fault or responsibility of the patient. Working closely with the patient's parents to resolve any issues is recommended, while documenting all instances of non-compliance or other challenges. If a parent's non-compliance threatens the patient's safety, consider contacting Child Protective Services instead of terminating the relationship. If a patient has filed a lawsuit or medical board complaint, don't assume the relationship has automatically ended. Ending the relationship still requires formal termination. We recommend doing so with a letter and appropriate notice. In part two of this video series, we'll review the process for properly terminating the patient-physician relationship. 
Thank you for watching. For more information about TMLT's risk management help and services, please visit tmlt.org. Thank you.